this is a termite mound. And it all starts from what they call the nuptial flight. And that the nuptial flight actually only happens once a year per termite mound. And it actually only happens after the wet seasons and the rain, the first good uh, rains in summer. And what will happen is after the ground is completely drenched with water, the, the workers will actually go open a guarded cell which, is, which will hold the, the nymph, which is the, the male and the female, the breeding part of a termite mound. The interesting part about a termite mound is every individual is actually genetically identical, but each system doesn't, they don't look the same as the other members of the, of the termite mound. So you'll get soldiers, which will be completely different to the worker drones, and you'll get the nymphs, which is, will become king and queens one day. And this division of labor actually helps to keep the the, the termite mound working properly. A termite mound is actually a, a, a feat of architecture. It's fascinating how it's actually been built. So how it will work is you'll get your main termite mound, uh, which is actually, it's actually like an iceberg. We are only seeing about 10% of it. So let's say this is the, la the earth's surface. The termite mound will actually, that's the only part that we will see and it will go further down into the ground. And this big section that has been built is actually been built particle by particle, grain of sand by grain of sand, which has been brought up from underneath here. So now what they're doing when they dig down into the soil is they're actually trying to get to the, the water table. So they'll have the water table coming here and they'll have a small little access here. But this water table is vital for another, uh, another function. And in areas where it's quite a bit hotter, you will get a vent system being quite a bit further away from the termite mound. And this vent system will come around just to about the surface of the, or the water table and come down into the center chimney stack of the, the termite mound. And you'll often find that they'll have one on the other side as well or in different directions. And then you will have this vent system coming out just on the water table. And how the queen will actually manage the temperature is she'll send out a communication through pheromones which will tell the workers or the drones to build, to open the, the chimney stack and the vent systems. So how they'll do it is they'll open the vent systems first and then open the main chimney stack. And because of all the heat that is generated in this, uh, the termite mound itself, when she opens the, the center chimney stack, it will allow all this hot uh, air to rise out. Hot air rises and cool air sinks. So now, she, as she opens here, she will be drawing in air this way, and then it will be coming in along these chambers, along the water table, which will work as a cooling system for the termite mound. Uh, there is a couple of other adaptions where they'll create combs right at the base here, which the workers will actually wet. They'll physically go down to the water table, collect water, and wet those combs to further cool it. But I think that's only if it's really, really necessary. Uh, it's actually quite interesting. We have copied this in some of our architecture. The, the Palm Hotel in Dubai, they used this same concept to bring in to cool the air before it goes through the air conditioning system of the hotel so at each end of the leaf of a, the palm island is a, a vent system and that vent system will draw in air which will go beneath the water into the aircon system cooling the air before it hits the aircon so these are fungi growing termites they actually don't possess the ability to to actually digest the hard cellulose part of plant so they will collect it and they'll partially digest it so they'll eat it and then they'll come back into a section of the termite mound which is the fungi growing chamber and they will then excrete that product and it will it will create a little farm a fungus farm and they will cultivate that fungus farm they will actually remove all other funguses that are not supposed to be there only leaving one specific fungus and that fungus and the termites they have a symbiotic relationship and it's obligatory 
they can't survive without each other. So the termites can't survive without the fungi and the fungi will not grow without the cultivation of the termite. So they are connected, they will always be connected. Now these, this fungus that they will grow, it's actually, it's a very small microscopic dot that you will see. And sometimes you'll see it brought out onto the outside of the termite mound when there's a, a, an excess of fungi inside the, the growing chamber. And then they'll create a little outside fungi garden, which is just to keep a, a reserve stock of that fungus. Termites fall under what they call a caste social structure, a caste system social structure. It's very similar to bees, where you'll have a queen, which is the powerhouse of the termite mound, and she is responsible for telling everyone inside the termite mound what to do. Uh, so the social structure, the caste social structure, the caste system social structure, is divided into the jobs that they do. So it's a division of labor. So the drones are responsible for the the upkeep of the termite mound, the building of the termite mound. And also they feed the queen and the soldiers who can't feed themselves. So they are the main workers of the, the colony. Then the soldiers who are much bigger than the drones and they have a, a larger head and weapon like mandibles and that's there to defend the termite mound from all types of dangers. The, and then the queen, the queen is quite a bit larger as we've said. So she is found in the royal chamber with the king and the, the drones are responsible for feeding her. Now when the drones feed her, they will touch mandibles which will exchange pheromone communication with the drones to the queen. And now the queen will then use that pheromone information to tell what eggs that she needs to produce. So if she picks up from those drones that there is a lack of soldier termites, she will produce soldier termite eggs. If she picks up that there is a lack of nymphs, maybe a, a predator like a pangolin or an artvark got into the, the termite mound and ate a lot of the nymphs, she will then produce nymphal eggs. And it's quite interesting, the queen is actually really long lived. She can live up to 50 years. And after that 50 years, they will elect a new queen if the termite mound is still a healthy system. So they will go through what they call a, a licking ceremony where the, the drones will actually lick the queen to death and then they will bring in a nymph and feed it a special chemical which will then start that nymph to swell like the queen did after the mating. Uh, you'll be able to tell if a, a termite mound has elected a queen by the fact that she would have wings because she hasn't gone through the nuptial flight. Some species of termites, especially the ones that we are talking about here, the fungi growing termites, are actually nocturnal. They don't possess any menelin in the skin to, to protect them against the sun. So how they will go about their business around that is they'll create a little mud sculpture or, or tunnel system over what they are feeding on. You often see it in the elephant dung where it's completely hollowed out from the inside and there's this cake of mud over it. And now that's the termites. They are creating an area where they can work during the day without being affected by the sun. When guides talk about termite mounds, you'll often hear them talk about a nutrient hotspot. Now a nutrient hotspot is an area where the soil that has been brought up from so deep below the earth is so rich in nutrients that it, it allows this bloom of, of growth out in the bush, normally a lot thicker than the surrounding bush around it. With termite mounds being quite long lived, you'll actually find that the termite mound came before the tree. And because termite mounds get to that, that immense heat of about 37 degrees Celsius, they normally help in the germinating of seeds. So as the termites start collecting the, the material that then they will grow their mold on, that material taken into the chambers and that heat germinates the seeds and the seeds often start growing from inside the termite mound. Now it's not going to hinder the, termite mount, the termites at all and they will actually use it as a bit of a stabilizing structure for the termite mound. It allows them to get a lot more height 
which means a bit more access to the sun which will heat it up in the colder months.